Hello, my name is Ali, and welcome to my channel. We are back with Mystic Destiny Serendipity of Aeons, Takumi's Route. Now, you may hear the fan in the background. That is because we live in Texas. It's 104 degrees, and um, our AC is not working. So, yeah, it's freaking hot. So, let's just go. Chapter 2, Moonrise. School and club activities have long since ended, and I sat in the empty classroom by myself. Taku has been really bummed out these last few weeks, since I had told him that I'm moving away. Since I told him, we haven't been talking much, and I can't help but feel sad that we might part like this. I know that I should go home already, but I don't feel like moving at all. I rest my head on my desk and sigh. Takumi, I don't want to end things between us like this. I hear the classroom door slide open behind me, and someone come inside. I don't want it to end at all. A pair of slippered feet came into my view, and I look up to see a rather fidgety looking t Takumi. Hey. Hey. The air between us feels so thick that you could cut it with a knife. I hate it. I hate this. I never used to be so awkward. We stare at each other for a while, neither one daring to say anything first. Then. As if making up his mind, Takumi takes a deep breath and looks down at me with determination shining in his eyes. I promise that I'll go to the airport with you to see you off. My heart jumps. The previous doom and gloom mood disappears within seconds. Really? Taku jerkily nods in return, and I can't help but smile. Uh, oh, jeez. Hiccup. I can't keep the smile off of my face. So, we don't have to part on bad terms after all. I waited for Takumi after school for as long as I could, but he never showed up. Why weren't you there, Taku? In the end, I had to go home so I wouldn't be late. I walked all the way home with a heavy heart. I nearly walk right into Mother as she walks out of the kitchen. Munchie, there you are. I was about to call you. Yeah, sorry. I had to stay behind at school for a little longer than I expected. I'm not lying exactly. I just don't want to say it out loud that Takumi broke his promise to me. Takumi's mother called me a little while ago. I look up. The faint feeling of hope rises in me. Maybe the whole Ar- Arai? Arai? I guess Arai. Family will come see us off. Mother sighs. She looks so tired. It seems that there has been a family emergency of some kind. She wouldn't say what exactly. They wanted to come see us off, but they won't be able to make it now. That little hope that flared up in me shrivels up and dies instantly. My stomach feels so heavy, I think I might throw up. Family emergency? So he won't be able to come then. I'm sorry, Munchie. I know you probably want to go see Takumi now. But we have to leave now, or we'll miss our flight. Everything is already prepared. Just go have a quick shower and we'll head out. I went about everything as if on autopilot then, getting ready like I was supposed to. But the horribly oppressive feeling didn't stop. It wouldn't go away no matter what. We made it, just on time for the flight. I spent the whole time on the plane feeling intensely lonely and sad. We've never talked since that time in the classroom when he made that promise to me. Takumi didn't try to contact me even once after that. As soon as I open my eyes, I wonder if I slept at all. I know I must have. I sit up in bed and stretch, my mind quickly wandering, uh, wanders to yesterday's events. The strange basement under the school, getting attacked by a teacher, Realizing that everything that had that happened with her wasn't some strange nightmare. All that and finding my childhood best friend again. With all that's happened, it's hard to say which surprised me the most. I felt like my life is turning into something out of, a, out of straight fiction. While I gather my thoughts, I look out the window. I stare at the wispy, barely there clouds without much thought. 
In this crazy time, it's nice to allow my mind to shut down for a little bit. I thought a thought suddenly pushes its way into the forefront of my mind. Eh? What the? It's evening already? I must have been way more exhausted than I realized. Now that I remembered Taku clearly, things might feel awkward between us considering how we left it. I look around my room, but there are no signs of Taku have, ever having been here. I wonder what happened after, uh, with him after I fell asleep. Did he just leave or snoop around at my place first? No. He probably just made sure I'm really out and went home. Eh? I'll just call him later. Time for a shower first, though. I push myself off the bed and head in for a quick shower. I walk out of the bathroom with a towel wrapped tightly around my body. Myself, not my body. Derp. Watch, he's going to be right there. I didn't even think to take a clean change of clothes with me. Something catches my eyes and I freeze. Uh, yep. I knew it. Takumi is sitting on my couch, rubbing his eyes with a little yawn. Why are you still here? I don't mean to shriek. Not really. But my voice comes out so high and so loud that Takumi's eyes snap open and write to me. I don't wait for a response. Clutching my towel, I sprint to my bedroom and slam the door shut. I lean against the door, heart pounding. My face is burning so badly I feel like I need to dunk my head in a bucket of ice. Oh god, no. Why? Why did he have to see me like that? Why? How? It doesn't take long to put two and two together. Despite my earlier assumptions, it's now clear that Takumi stayed out there and slept over. Duh. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I just, um, sometimes this character can be a little derp, but I will give her, um, some leeway due to the fact that she had a rough night, but, or a rough day too. So, but still, I mean, can't put two and two together. You were like that in Shinji's route too. Come on, girl. It's obviously that I just didn't notice him on my way to the bathroom. Hey, Munchie? Takumi's voice comes from the other side of the door. I'm, I'm sorry for staying over. I was just worried about you. Worried that you might have another power outburst or without me. I shake my head but quickly stop myself. Right. He can't see me. I'm sorry for yelling at you. You just surprised me. I hear a small amused chuckle. <laughs> Can I come in then? N no. I yell out perhaps a little too loud to which Takumi laughs. Just wait out there, I'll get dressed and be right out. Takumi makes an affirmative noise and soon enough I hear his footsteps going away from my bedroom. I stand there for a few seconds before moving to get my clothes on. After getting dressed and calming down a bit, I finally come out to the living room. Takumi looks up at me from his spot on the couch. We need to talk. Yes, we do. I agree. I take a seat on the other side of end of the couch, leaving plenty of space between us. Things feel beyond awkward now since I remembered who he is, on top of everything that happened last night, and just now. But Takumi looks completely unaffected. He continues to look at me evenly. Seemingly not wanting to waste any time, he starts talking. What was it that you originally called me for yesterday? Well, I don't think I can attend Hajiwara anymore. I need to explain, so I'll start over from the, from the beginning. But before I do, are you really familiar with the other world, like you said? Takumi nods. My family has had tides with the supernatural world since before I was born. It's just not something we ever publicize to normal humans like you. I know I had asked, but to actually hear him confirm it. To actually hear that the, uh, our, our eyes, I guess it's our eyes. Air eyes? Our eyes? I'm going to say our eyes. I mean, I'm going to fail at it every time, but oh well. Have a hidden side to them? like this feels shocking to say the least i don't know what to say but takumi just continues to speech speak derp i've always known about the basement in hajiwara and i made it my goal to get down there this year to find out more i don't know what happened with you munchie but 
I've seen enough supernaturals and incidents involving them to know something was up. Have you always had powers? I shake my head. I don't want to say it. I don't want to talk about it. Finally, I give in and sigh. <sighs> it's pretty heavy, but just let me tell it all. Takumi nods without comment, quietly encouraging me to begin. It really only just happened, but my mother took me somewhere over the weekend. She, she drugged me and performed some kind of ritual on me, during which she told me the truth. She, her real name is Shizuka. She's some ancient immortal sorceress who created me, a, a homunculus. I wasn't born, I was made. She made me to transfer her curse of immortality onto. Ouch. Sorry, I hit, kicked the desk. She didn't ask me if I wanted any of this. She just did it. I mean, so little to her that giving me a choice in my own life wasn't an option. I meant so little to her. Derp. I thought it just was all some kind of horrible nightmare until Hikaru almost attacked me. I pause, unsure of what else to say. The silence between us draws for, draws on for a while. I wonder if I'm really immortal now. Somewhere in the back of my mind, so deep that it almost completely hidden, I feel a distant sense of terror. I push it away, further down into the depths of my mind. No matter how much I don't want to think about it, the thought pops up. I'm not real. I don't have a father or a mother. Am I just a thing? I don't realize I'm even crying until Takumi puts his arms around me and holds me tight. Everything's going to be okay. I hide my face in his chest, clinging onto his shirt as he holds me sh my shaking form in his arms. Takumi gently rubs my back as I cry, only quietly repeating it's okay to me over and over. I don't know how much time passes, but after a while I just run out of tears. I wipe my face with my sleeve, but stay as I am in his arms. I don't look at him. I don't think I can just yet. Hey, Taku, why didn't you come see me off that day? Takumi pulls back away from me. His eyes dart off to somewhere to the side. I just got caught up with something and couldn't go, even though I felt terrible about it. It was a family emergency, right? Was it something to do with your grandmother? Is she okay? Yeah, she's okay. Takumi seems to want to leave it at that, since he doesn't say anything else. He's hiding something from me. That much is clear. But even if I feel like he is hiding something, I don't pry. He's here for me throughout all this, so the least I can do is not pry into whatever it is he doesn't want to talk about. Takumi doesn't say anything more, and neither do I. I end up staring off into space, trying to shut out any intrusive thoughts. Munchie, if you want to talk, remember that I'm here. I, I was so excited to start school, to start a whole new chapter of my life, you know? But now, now everything is in shambles. My entire life has been changed because of Shizuki's selfishness. Sh Shizuki. Shizuka's selfishness. <laughs> Jeez. I might not even be able to die now, for God's sake. It's all her fault. How dare she force her problems onto someone else? How horrible of a person could she be to raise a child solely for the purpose of forcing that onto her? Onto me? And then she just left without even making sure that I could control all these powers. I clench my fists and stand up, seething I glare at nothing in particular. Takumi stands up and moves closer to me. Munchie, you need to calm down. <laughs> I turn to face him. I want to find her. Her? Do you mean Shizuka? I nod. I want to find her and make her take this curse off of me. Make her take her powers back. And if she won't, then I'll make her pay. Ooh, girl, in this route you have anger issues. Holy crap. Takumi looks unsettled at my declaration. He sighs and wordlessly falls back onto the couch. 
I looked down at him with a single thought in mind. Are you going to help me or try to stop me? Taku sighs again and tiredly scratches his head. I'm not going to try to stop you, but I don't want to help you go down this path either. But still, I understand better than anyone if you have a goal like that. You're not just going to forget about it, and that you'll only end up putting yourself in danger. He looks me in the eyes very seriously, suddenly standing. He moves very close to my face. Are you truly serious about finding Shizuka? I nod and look away from him. I don't know how I can concentrate on my studies with something this big and unresolved hanging over me without knowing it if I might kill someone by accident or if I can di even die myself. Besides that, I won't be able to sit still not knowing if she can fix it. At the very least, she deserves some of the pain she has given me. I'm going to let you guys go here, and man, she is intense in this one. As I said in my last Hakuoki video, I do have a channel that I play Sims. I am right now doing the 100 Baby Challenge redo because I already played it before, but it, I ended up losing the save. wasn't even halfway through. But if you want to see that, uh, the channel is called ATA Gameplay. You can go look it up. It's also in my um, channels. Uh, when you click on my channel, it'll say channels, and it's under there. That one ended up the channel my friend and I have made just to goof off. Anyway, I hope you are enjoying and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.